We couldn't see anyone beating him. Well, so far, myself and Dan Dawson have been proven right. But can Jeffrey Disvan gain revenge for that final defeat earlier this year? The young Dutchman in his second PDC final. A fantastic start to 2018 for him. But Carrie Anderson looking to take his win tally to four tournaments for this year and his prize money tally for the last week to £90,000. Dan, can Disvan stop Anderson? Oh, yes, he can. We know he can. Uh, Jeffrey Desvan is one of only three people to beat Jeffrey the world number one Michael Van Gerwen in 2018. The others, of course, being Michael Smith. You saw that outside. here on PDC TV in the UK Open qualifiers. The other one was Peter Snakebite Wright in the Premier League. 25. Gary's won the ball. However, he's got his work cut out. Gary they come into first. this with Gary averaging 98 for the day, Jeffrey Desvan averaging 96. Only Dave Chisnell has hit more 180s than Jeffrey Desvan today. He's hit 18 of them in his six games, so he's averaging three per game. He might have to hit a few more if he is going to topple Anderson and stop him doing the double here in Barnsley this weekend, though. 40. But that is not how he would have anticipated starting against the flying Scotsman. 100. And the Scotsman certainly has been flying so far this weekend. He's on a huge winning run, is he, Dan? It's over 20 games now. Well, it's 21 games 59. unbeaten. There are a couple of draws in the Premier League, and draws he's had to fight very hard for against Daryl Gurney and, of course, Peter Wright. Peter Wright, I think he went 12 data, 11 data in the last couple of legs to snatch 60. a six-all draw. But he won yesterday, of course, seven games. He's won six games to get to this point. He carved through the field to win the UK 81. Open title for the first time in his career. So the last person to beat him was Corey Cadby in the second players championship event of the year and of course he got revenge against Cadby in the final of the UK Open. Yeah, beat Disvan 6-2 in the fourth UK Open qualifier at their second meeting. The other one was also 6-2. 134. Anderson approaches Yoki needing 152 but it doesn't have to go right now because Disvan is not on a finish after a dozen darts. 128. Absolutely no problem with the setup there for Gary Anderson. Leaves himself double 12, the double 12 that he missed early on in the day for a perfect nine data. Jeffrey Desvan hits a 171 to apply the pressure, but it doesn't matter because double 12 is the double that Gary Anderson won both his world titles on, and he pins it in the first leg to go 1 0 up. What I liked particularly about Jeffrey Desvan's win against Michael Van Gerwen was not only that he showed that he had the talent to beat MVG, it was a temperament as well in that match. Never really looked like buckling under any kind of Four. pressure. No, nope. it was very, very impressive. MVG back in action on Thursday in Nottingham in the Premier League. Gary Anderson, of course, will be 85. there. And who knows, he might be taking a 22 unbeaten streak of games into his match at the Motor Points Arena. 100. Jeffrey Desvan, I mean, we, we say this about a number of players. When they are on, they are on. And it can be hit and miss, and sometimes it's, it's very much around the, the fast throwers. Now, Jeffrey Desvan has already made one final. He was beaten by Gary Anderson in the UK Open qualifier final. He's been on today with a 96 average across 96. the day. But the first three players' championship events this year, he went out in the first round. Jamie Caven, Joe Cullen, and the other guy to beat him was uh, Madhouse Richie 54. Edhouse. So he has been playing some fantastic darts. Beat MVG, of course, at the UK Open before losing to Paul Hogan next round. But... You know, it's not been 95. every single time he turns up that he's been turning it on, the Black Cobra. Well, you mentioned that pace can dictate play for Jeffrey Disvan, and Gary Anderson's a man 95. who likes to get on with it. The match against Adrian Lewis in the semi-final was played at a rather slower pace than expected. Hang on a minute. Well, Anderson was looking 80. at the biggest shot of them all, but Disvan will be able to breathe a little easier. Well, maybe 27. not so now. 90 for Anderson will probably plump for the bullseye at the start of this. Well, he's changed his mind from what he was doing yesterday. He couldn't miss the ball. Doesn't need to go for it now. 80. Well, a chance for an early break. Goes begging for Gary Anderson. 30. Jeffrey Desvan already will be concerned. Oh, he's going to let off there. Big let off for the Black Cobra. Anderson missing inside. He's left himself in the madhouse. Double one. No score. 
Had he missed outside, we'd have seen both players. The remaining score of two. As it is, Gary Anderson has nothing left. And a timely tweet of Gary Anderson on fire after a 20-plus start leg. But he is certainly on fire this weekend in Barnsley, and in fact has been for a, a good few weeks 85. now, Gary Anderson. And as you were making reference to yesterday, Dan, this is the kind of stuff that sparked his surge to a couple of world titles. Yeah, when you go 59. back in that 12-month period leading up to the 2015 World Championship where Gary finally became the world champion that I think everybody in docks 60. knew that he could be, he was winning titles for fun. And that World Championship, which of course, you know, I know it's 45. the first tournament to finish in 2015, but it's the, kind of the culmination of the 2014 season. That was his ninth title in that 12-month spell. 140. This would be his fourth already, including one of the big TV ones at the UK Open. And I think that is a statement of intent for Anderson as Jeffrey Desvan fires in his 19th 180 of the day. Yeah, a statement of intent from the youngster as well there. But Anderson, once again, is first to a finish. And I've lost the count of the amount of legs I've said that over the course of the weekend with Gary Anderson on the hockey. Well, today he's won almost three quarters of the legs of darts that he has played. As Anderson picks out double seven for an 82 checkout and a three nil lead. This final could be going the way of the final these two contested at the UK Open qualifiers when Anderson ran out a 6-2 winner. They had met once before. You've got to go quite a long way back to 2015 when they met. That was 6-2 as well. And right now it does not look like the Black Cobra Jeffrey Desvan has got enough to really test the Flying Scotsman. Yeah, that second leg has messed up the average for Anderson. But I'm sure he can bring it up in the remainder of this match. And it might only be three legs, Dan. Well, it might be. We saw Gary Anderson whitewash Peter Snakebite right in the final yesterday in double quick time, having already whitewashed the world champion Rob Cross. We've seen a couple of big wins for him. 6-1 against Dave Chisnell in the semi-finals with an average of almost 106. 100. It was 6-1 against Rhys Griffin in the last 16. Start of the day with a couple of 6-2 wins. And he had a couple of 100-plus averages against Keegan Brown and Christo Reyes. They came closer than anybody to stopping Gary Anderson today. Christo getting four legs off him, Keegan getting three. But at the minute, Jeffrey Desvan is struggling 84. to even get one. Yeah, three one forties on the spin from Gary Anderson in this fourth leg. And now he wants double 13 for a dozen data. 55. And this is a kind of shot that Desvan is going to have to hit to trouble Gary Anderson at all. Not going to go, so... The two-time world champ returns 94. looking for a four-leg cushion. Double 13 it is. Working his way in. Oh! No score. Oh, the way that he's been throwing, you just kind of expected that last dart to find the mark. 20 for double top. Well, he's hit the double top by accident, which leaves double Four. 10. And that second dart there, the one, first one at double 10, I don't think it helped him very much. Well, I half wondered if Gary Anderson might decide to go 22. two for double 12 there, but he's ended up missing a, a string of doubles. I, haven't, I think Gary Anderson's missed more doubles in this match than he has all weekend. Game Jeffrey shot. doesn't miss there, and he does get a leg on the board and avoids the embarrassment of a whitewash, the kind of which was handed out to uh, higher-ranked players than him yesterday by Gary Anderson, who's looking to put that last leg right. Yeah, that's his first maximum of this final, Gary Anderson. And him's Jeffrey's second? No, not quite. 40. Well, this is an astonishing set of displays from Jeffrey Desvan to start 2018 considering he lost his tour card at the back end of last year had to go back to Q school powered his way through on the opening day in Hildesheim to get his tour 61. card again but of course you start from scratch so even though he made a quarter final on the pro tour at the back end of last year that's not ranking money he gets to keep hold of as Anderson 135 looks at the 15s leaves himself 46 after nine we were speaking in the semi-final about Jeffrey's record this time last year and he just could not win a match if he'd have 60. bought the only ticket for a raffle he wouldn't have won it last year this time and Gary Anderson looking at tops well, he's 26. having trouble on the doubles here it's probably, in terms of 
statistics that the worst that Gary Anderson has played this weekend and Jeffrey Dijvan is still not really in the match. Yeah, well, he started today with just an 89 average against Mark Dubridge, but he did win it comfortably 6-2. Game shot. And he does pin double five to go 4-1 up in this one, and it is looking like Gary Anderson is going to do the double. He has done that before. That was the 82 checkout from earlier on on the double seven. 95. He did it back in 2011 where he won both Pro Tour events over the weekend, beat Wes Newton and Andy Smith in the finals of those. And that is 180 number two for Gary Anderson. And Jeffrey Devon may be getting that sinking feeling again. You see the shake of the head. 40. This is not what he dreamed about. And you, you wonder how much he must have thought about that final. Hang on, Gary. Oh, five perfect darts, but no more. Well, you could see Gary Anderson wince there as the final dart evaded the treble 20. He felt it was on, and I think he would have quite fancied it having hit the... Potentially hit a nine data earlier on. He missed double 12, Dan. He would commentate on it. Was it close? It was close. He was very close. And he, he's not a man who's hit a lot of nine darters in his career, Gary Anderson. He only had four, which is 96. surprising considering he hit so many 180s. Oh, look at this. Look Game at this. Shot. It's 11 darters for Gary Anderson now. The average, yeah, all right, it's not stellar as we've seen all the way through the day, but 94, very respectable. 11 darter. He is one leg away from completing a perfect weekend here at 60. Barnsley Metrodome. I think we all wish we could throw darts like Gary Anderson, even the vast majority of the professional darts players on the tour, but these ain't bad. 180. Well, even Michael Smith, a top 10 player in the world, tweeted, I think it was yesterday, I 93. wish I was Gary Anderson. Now, he might have just been putting in a few good words to grease the wheels, because Gary's from the same management stable and he's kind of a mentor to him. 123. I think there's certainly an element of truth in that. Well, we said at the start of this that the previous 56 meetings had been 6-2. Jeffrey in the box seat in this leg and it's against the darts as well. So you could still match that or even better it. Yeah, I just wonder over the intervening days since that final when he was beaten 6-2 by Gary Anderson, the UK Open qualifiers, how much he's thought about it and thought, if I get another chance, 140. that's when I need to step up and really play my best game. Play as well as I've been playing all the way through the day to get to the final. There's Vaughan now. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was looking for the bullseye. Would have left him double 16. But it was a long way off. 81. And Anderson waiting in the wings to try and finish in style. Two treble twenties needed. Doesn't get them. So Jeffrey Desvan to get a second leg. He always gets two legs against Gary Anderson. The problem for the Black Cobra is he never gets more than two legs against Gary Anderson. Double top. Double ten. Game and there shot. it is. That's leg number two for the Black Cobra. And it is a break as well. be interesting to talk to Jeffrey and see if this does end up as we think it's going to end up with Gary Anderson winning, whether he sees this as another step forward in his career. And he's, he's working from a blank slate, having to go back and get his tour card. I mean, he's down at number 81 in the world rankings because he started from zero, but he's rising very rapidly with his performances. Does he see this as a step forward or does he see it as a missed opportunity? Because he will be frustrated that he's only averaging mid-80s here. Yeah, he must have some good. 37. Jeffrey Dizvan, because it was a back end of last year. He reached a semi final on the Pro Tour, and it must have been at such a blow to lose his Tour card at that time. But then he went 54. to the inaugural European qualifying school and won on the very first day outright his Tour card. And he's already reached a couple of finals. He's one of the players of the year so far. Well, you only have to look at that European Q school. Christoph Ratajski didn't manage to get his Tour card, and he's actually won a Pro Tour event this year. 60. It's an indication that there are some serious, serious players at Q School, both the Q Schools, and it is not easy 57. to get your tour card. You speak to anybody who's had to go through it. It is a gruelling, gruelling business. Well, look, it might well be a, a small step forward at least because he's looking likely to get three legs off Gary 60. Anderson here. Although a big setup would apply an awful lot of pressure. 99. 90 then for Desvan to move within two, and that's a 
disaster of a dart, really, because Anderson will oh, fancy the Shanghai shots. Treble 20, single 20, tops. There's the single. Oh, and he's just the wrong side of the wire into the treble one. He does leave himself 20. double top. Desvon gets two darts for the leg, and it has to go. Has to go to stay alive, to keep his hopes of a maiden. Senior tight, and he's missed the big number again. There have been some wild darts from Jeffrey Desvon. Three in a row. Three darts in a row. He's missed the big target that he's been going for. So he's only managed to get himself one dart. A double 16, 25. and he's in the wrong segment again. Gary Anderson looking disgust at those attempts from Jeffrey Disvan, but I'm sure he'll fill his bolts, boots on top here shot, now. And I'm Gary not. Anderson makes it back to back wins at these Players' Championship events. A fantastic performance throughout the day, once again from the Flying Scotsman. It didn't really spark in the final, but it's a third consecutive 6 2 victory over Jeffrey Disvan. A second.